The Japanese dominate the Pacific, and their Supreme War Council continues to execute sweeping plans to bring 700 million Asiatics under imperial control. Proud and confident after her shattering naval victories at the outbreak of war, Japan spills over her legitimate boundaries, pouring supplies and manpower into overseas bases to protect her new empire and defy the Allies. the emperor, Hirohito, son of heaven. In the fore of all conquest, on the bow of all her ships, the imperial crest, a chrysanthemum with 16 leaves. which for months after Pearl Harbor wields undisputed rule over the greatest of oceans. This is the Navy which has ranged in triumph over the wide Pacific spaces. This is the Navy which has never known defeat. This is the Navy dedicated to a creed fanatic. With tenacious and tireless spirit, we strive to reach superhuman skill and perfect fighting efficiency. Now its mission is to build a mighty base in the Bismarck Archipelago, Rabaul on the island of New Britain. And from this base, soldiers, sailors, and airmen of Imperial Japan can attempt to break the fragile hold of Americans and Australians southeast on Guadalcanal, southwest on New Guinea. seeks to control the South Pacific and clench her hold on the Solomon Islands and New Guinea. Garrisoned with 80,000 troops, 
Rabaul is a springboard for conquest, a bulwark for defense. Five new airfields are prepared to support the Imperial Japanese Navy. Impregnable aircraft carrier that blocks the American climb up the ladder of the Solomon Islands. Carefree pilots, day after day, carry out their simple mission. Destroy all ships, supplies, and men who have the audacity to challenge an imperial mandate. Rabaul's air and naval power sweeps out to dominate surrounding islands and waters. To eliminate Rabaul, the Japanese and the Allies know a foothold must be won and held on the islands that ring it, and bases established from which it can be reduced blow by blow until the knockout. But first, the Allies must forge rings around Rabaul. Rendova, another rung up the ladder of the Solomon Islands toward Rabaul. But Rendova is only a stepping stone across a narrow arm of water to Munda and its priceless airstrip. Munda was murder. Planned as a quick stroke of Allied strategy, it took five bitter weeks to capture. But it takes only five days for the United States Navy's fabulous construction battalions, the Sea Bees, to transform ruined Munda runways into an operational airfield. Georgia rainforest where wild orchids flourish and cockatoos screech, where man struggles to exist and insects thrive, another allied airfield comes to life, and another bead is drawn on the target, Rabal. I 
Camp of Munda is the Allied way of observing the first anniversary of the landing on Guadalcanal. 200 miles south, Guadalcanal itself has burgeoned into a major base, justifying the agony, the blood of the Marines who won it. But there is a long way to go, and in the summer of 1943, a new name dominates intelligence sessions on Guadalcanal. The name? Bougainville, biggest of the Solomon Islands, essential link in the ring being forged around Rabaul. Volcanic prize, ripe for ripping from the Japanese vine. Week after week, from Guadalcanal's hard-won Henderson Field, Army, Navy, Marine, and New Zealand pilots take off to soften up Bougainville in preparation for another assault by the United States Marines. complex movement of men, ships, supplies has only one purpose, to advance and support war's newest weapon, the airplane. But before planes fly from Bougainville, the way must first be cleared by war's oldest ingredient, the foot soldier. The third marines take on the job. There are many D-days in the Pacific many an H hour. And yet with each comes a new sense of foreboding, of emptiness, of fear. As the opening salvos sound the notes of war's eternal theme, death. Augusta Bay, toward the beaches of Cape Torokina, the Marines go in to meet the dank challenge of Bougainville. It is November 1st, 1943. Before the invaders lie the wildest jungle, the deepest swamps they have yet encountered in the South Pacific. And hidden in the tangle of jungle and swamp, the enemy. have won, the CBs take over. Hard on the heels of the riflemen come the engineers. What was a battlefield yesterday will be an airfield tomorrow. Black cat. 
bats come out at night. The lumbering Catalinas which scour the seas in search of enemy ships. The eyes of the cat see through the dark where the Imperial Japanese Navy has scheduled four last runs of the Tokyo Express down the slot of water separating the Solomon Islands. And these last runs have famous names. The Battle of Kula Gulf, the Battle of Kolumbangara, the Battle of Empress Augusta Bay, the Battle of Cape St. George. The call of the black cat is the call to battle. Inside the groping ships, in combat intelligence centers, the intricate apparatus of search and detection picks up the scent. Out somewhere in the ominous dark are ships with names like Amagiri and Uzuki, which must be found, destroyed. Inside ships with names like Honolulu and Mount Pelier, American sailors prepare to thwart the last stand of the Imperial Japanese Navy in the South Pacific. Invisible to one another, opposing warships close on a darkling sea, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant navies clash by night. Piva and the Torakina airstrips, only 210 miles from Rabaul. The ring is closing. The Marines have gone, and the defense perimeter around the thriving airfields is guarded by the 14th Army Corps. Who cares what has happened to the 40,000 isolated Japanese elsewhere on the island? And off-duty life is not too bad. Just relax and take it easy. concentration of Japanese artillery in the South Pacific has been secretly brought up along hidden jungle trails. With sudden, furious assault on the American perimeter outpost, Hill 700, the enemy reopens the Battle of Bougainville. Four full months after the initial landings, back into the jungle that is everybody's enemy, back into the devil's furnace, goes the American infantry. Days of savage, bloody struggle lie ahead until the 37th Division breaks the enemy, this time for good.
final victory on Bougainville, other bases, other rings are forged around and around Rabaul. Up the New Guinea coast go the Allies. Into Cape Gloucester on New Britain go the Marines. Into the Admiralties goes the United States Army. Onto the islands of Green and Emerald go more Marines and veterans of Bella La Bella, soldiers of New Zealand. And the Navy that cruises unmolested through these waters is the United States Navy. Thousands of Japanese have been bypassed, left to wither on the vine. Rabaul is being strangled by runways branded on the encircling jungle islands. Rabaul and its harbor will be smashed, pulverized, neutralized. From around the ring they come. Liberators from Guadalcanal, Warhawks from Munda, Corsairs from Emerald, Mitchells from New Guinea, Avengers from Bougainville. The holocaust of allied reprisal spells doom for Rabaul across the skies of the South Pacific.